Hi, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. I'm out here with the Karayan One, returning from its journey out of Kerbin's sphere of influence that you saw, well, quite a few episodes ago that they were out there. And they're coming in now for their second arrow breaking maneuver. And I thought, well, while we're doing that, why don't we talk about what's coming up in this particular episode? Uh, this episode's about getting the two Karayans, the Karayan 1 here and the Karayan 2, which is currently docked at Kerbin Station, uh, getting them ready for their next mission. I think with the Karayan 1, the next mission is going to be to send it out towards the moon, where I have the Kegel 3, which I launched last episode, waiting for it in a polar orbit. Uh, and we're going to perform another moon landing there and knock off a whole stack of various contracts and, of course, collect us some science along the way. And uh, in the meantime, the Karayan 2, I'm going to send it off to Minmus Station. I do have a station in orbit around Minmus, and I want to send it that way. Um, eventually, to rescue a Kerbal that I got stuck on the surface, not just the Kerbal stuck on the surface, but actually the Kerbal's uh, command pod also stuck on the surface, but in order to do that I need to have a purpose-built lander, which is not in place yet. I haven't started building it just at this moment, so you won't be seeing it this episode, but hopefully in a very near future episode, because the thing is, is I got to get that command pod back to Kerbin's surface safely, so that'll be an interesting mission to perform as well. But I figured in the meantime, I might as well get some Kerbals out there towards Minmus. But uh, before we can do all that, we got to get some Kerbals down to the surface. We got to get some other Kerbals back up to the station. We're going to do a lot of crew rotation and vessel shuffling as well. The Karayan 1 here is, uh, well, it's a little bit hobbled. Its reaction wheels, its main reaction wheels have broken down. Um, it needs to be sort of patched up a little bit before it's ready to be moving on. Anyway, this arrow breaking maneuver and the next one it performed after this entirely mundane. Uh, you've seen me do so many arrow breaking maneuvers in the past, and I think I'm just going to actually skip right past them and get myself to Kerbin Station where Svetlana and Bartner and Luya are getting ready to make their descent down to Kerbin's surface. Okay, there we go. We'll just use a little bit of RCS to back away from the station. Turn on the reaction wheels and the capsule. What's... Oh, they still got a day left of life support. Yeah, packed life support's giving me warnings that their stuff's low, but a day, we should have them down in a jiffy. And even if things go wrong, um, uh, Bill is still on the station. He still has himself another crew use. He can go get them within a day easy. So, uh, shouldn't be a problem. And I, some people have mentioned, too, that you know, this, this thing, although it can hold five Kerbals, it can actually only descend three because the orbital module uh, is detached um, during descent and cannot land back down on the surface. There's no parachutes attached to it or anything. And some people were commenting that uh, that seems rather inefficient. Uh, yeah, perhaps. One thing is just the look of it. I do like the look of the Soyuz-style vehicle, but... Number two is, you know, in an emergency, I think it'd be nice to be able to carry up to five Kerbals, even if I can't get them down to the surface. If I needed to get somebody in a pinch, I could get them, you know, a whole bunch of Kerbals back to Kerbin Station. Anyway, why don't we uh, perform our descent burn here, paying some attention to trajectories. I just did a bit of a quick save there. This is my first time descending this Kuryu's. And it's got a number of things on it that's different from other things that I descended, descended. so I gave myself a bit of permission to uh, do a quick save in case something untowards happens, something I didn't know about. But anyway, we are now performing our descent burn, watching trajectories. There comes the red for our part in the atmosphere, and we're just waiting for that cross. There we go. That looks good. Always on my previous descents, uh, it seemed like trajectories was predicting long, so I'll go a little bit past the Kerbal Space Center. And whoa! Oh. <laughs> Wastewater's leaking. Well, just because it's annoying, not that I really care, we'll send out uh, Bartner here to fix that up. There we go. Okay, it was right there, so that was at least easy to do. We'll get him back in. 
and get ourselves down to the surface. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's put on the brakes here just a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure that all the electricity is in the descent module, which is that module in the middle. Actually, this will give me an opportunity to talk about a new mod I have. It's called, oops, I clicked on a light by mistake. That's, oh, okay, let's get rid of all of this. Anyway, the mod is called Draggable Menus. It's very simple. What you can, first of all, what it does is it makes sure none of the menus go off the screen, which is in itself just brilliant. But the other thing you can do, as the name implies, is drag the menus around. It just makes it really easier, especially with long menus like this, to manage what's going on. So I want to transfer the electricity into the descent mod. Oh, wait, that was the monoprop. I don't need monoprop in the descent module. We'll do that out. We'll charge it up with electricity. But yeah, being able to move those menus around, oh, that's really useful, especially with long menus like that. And again, that's called draggable menus. I'll, I'll use it again in just a little bit. But right now, we are getting into the top part of the atmosphere, so it's time to get rid of what we no longer need. Oh, okay. Oh, that didn't do anything. Let's try it again, stage again. Okay, there goes the service module. I don't know if you noticed, but you can see those wires. Okay, I was hoping this would all detach at the same time, but I guess I'll have to just decouple this manually. There we go. So there goes our orbital module. So all we got left is the descent module and the parachutes that are on. I was just making sure I didn't deploy the parachutes during that time, but they're not. They are not deployed or armed. And then we'll get Svetlana to lock that onto the retrograde vector. We have a heat shield down here on the bottom. So well now all that's left is to get this down to the surface. And this of course is is meant to emulate how the real Soyuz uh, does work. It also has an orbital module which is detached and, and burns up in the atmosphere along with the service module and just this descent module with uh, our brave Kerbinauts, uh locked inside is all that makes it down to the surface. Oh geez, I just noticed that uh, I've used up most of my electricity already. Shoot. Okay, I've turned the SAS off. I guess locking it onto that retrograde vector wasn't such a good idea, and I'm just sort of washing to see if this thing will naturally stick aerodynamically to the retrograde vector. It, it should, but... <laughs> Kerbal Space Program has taught me not to assume anything. Now it seems to like to be on the retrograde vector. So let's uh, turn off the torque to save even a little bit more electricity. Uh, we are now on nothing and we will even turn off the lights. The lights are on backwards toggle. So it's actually turning, toggling on the lights, turning them off. If you're looking at the icon up there at the top near the altimeter. Okay, well, not a big deal. Uh, we, we can pop the chutes without electricity anyway, so it's not going to be a big deal. And, and the Kerbals will be down to the surface before we are in any serious trouble. So why don't we talk a little bit more about the draggable menus mod. So uh, let's open up the menu for the command pod. And I hold the Alt key, and that allows me to drag it around. And once you've dragged it somewhere, it will stay in that particular spot even as you move the camera around and all that kind of thing. So that's that's pretty cool. So here I'm moving the camera. You can see it's still just staying in the same spot. And so I'm going to monitor all the stuff associated with the command pod. And now I'm going to take the parachute. And again, I'll hold the Alt key to move it. I'm just having a little bit of trouble grabbing it. There we go. I'm going to put that up here. And that way when it gets ready to deploy the parachute, I don't have to fumble for the buttons or trying to right click the buttons are right there I can just click on them as I need them yeah, this thing is sticking really well to the retrograde vector so the fact that I'm running out of electricity isn't really a big deal in fact there we go electricity is now depleted and it doesn't really make sense to keep that command module menu so we'll, we'll right click here unfortunately you can't close the windows the menus individually it's a right click and they just all close but we'll put the uh, parachute one back again so that I can arm the parachutes when I need to and you know what else I, th I should put the heat shield one up here too not just to monitor the ablator because that's I got more blader than I'll ever need. Um, but also I'm going to be decoupling or detaching the heat shield at the appropriate time as well. 
Okay, so uh, why don't we spin this around and we'll right click and get the heat shield menu up and, oh, oh shoot, I just lost the parachute one. That's the one thing, you gotta be careful right clicking, it's, it, it is easy to lose them. So there's our parachute menu and uh, we'll put the heat shield menu right underneath it here. Whoops, missed it again. Alt, there we go. Drag it over there. Yeah, also I found that if you go to the uh, map view and come back, all those menus will be gone as well. And, uh, you know, I was a little disappointed. I, w I actually wanted to keep Svetlana and Luya actually up in space and send them off to the moon uh, for another mission and get them down onto the surface of the moon. Because Bartner's the only one that can level up here. But, uh, you know, with a three-person command, and I already have more Kerbals in space than I have uh, crew uses that can bring them back down. So I needed to bring all three of them down. It was all of them or none of them. And I wanted to get Bartner up to level two because he needs to get back up there and fix those bloody reaction wheels on the crew use one. Okay. Oh, oh, parachute deployment failed. Reason too high. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, let's try this again. Deploy parachutes. Nope, still too high. Screw it. Just arm them. Arm them. Oh, and there they go. Yeah, looking at it now, I bet you I must have had the uh, deployment height set at four kilometers. You know, you build these things so long ago, you forget what you have them set at. But there we go, and it should be at 700 meters then. I think that's become my sort of standard thing to do. It should fully deploy. So there we go, 800. Excellent, and now we'll go over and we'll decouple that heat shield. Ooh, heat shield away. <laughs> I didn't really need to do that, but I think I enjoy doing that. There, okay, well that's gone. Polluting the oceans for science. Okay, and we'll get these back down, these folks back down to the surface, and we'll get ourselves back out and see how the Korion 1 is doing. Ryan 1 is now here in the midst of its fourth arrow breaking pass, but if we take a look up here at some of the temperature data coming at us from Kerbal Engineer, ooh, that says 94% for critical thermal percentage, and those are batteries. And we're still just under 30 seconds away from periapsis, and it's still climbing. 90, oh, 97%. It seems to be slowing down the rate at which it's 98%. <laughs> Things explode at 100. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's 99. Oh dear, no, this does not look good. Oh! Okay, that was a battery. Looking in there, it looks like it's just one. Yeah, it looks like there's definitely an empty space there. Okay, what? Oh! <laughs> I was about to say one battery's not so bad. Oh dear. Okay, I, th I think that, that, that was on the other side, I'm pretty sure. Let's go take a look. And... Oh, I think I got two empty spaces. <laughs> Three batteries. Oh, there's oh, there's only six now. I'm down to three. Oh dear. Well, this guy is. We're on our way to the shop, as it was, right? <laughs> we already have some repairs that are uh, that are going to have to be made. We might as well get our money's worth, I suppose. I think as well when we replace these batteries, and there's plenty of batteries on Kerbin Station, by the way. I think when I replace them, I'm gonna try and see if I can tuck them away a little better. I think they are a little bit in the airstream. Anyway, the rest of this went without issue, as did the uh, next and fifth and final arrow breaking pass, which got its orbit down uh, low enough that I could think about setting up the drift burn to get our rendezvous with Kerbin Station. All right, let's get rid of the node here, take a look at what we got. That's a little low. I want to push my periapsis up. 120 kilometers, which is the altitude that Kerbin Station is at there, that ought to do it. 
And then what we'll do is we'll set up a maneuver here at periapsis. And I started by decreasing, like setting up a retrograde burn to decrease my orbit, but unfortunately uh, that would decrease the orbit into the atmosphere before I would get an actual encounter. So then I did the opposite of that. I increased my orbit, um, which did end up getting an encounter for me, but only after a 144 meter per second burn. Um, I don't know, I, I, I didn't particularly like that, not only because that's an expensive burn, but also uh, my encounter speed when I get close to the station would be very high because our orbits are so different. So uh, then I decided to set up a little bit of a retrograde burn. And then just started using precise node to hop ahead a few orbits and ended up with this 60 meter per second retrograde burn uh, that got me a nice encounter. And uh, our orbits are fairly close, so that means that my encounter speed will be fairly low. And the, the burn's an hour and 45 minutes away. We have to go a few times around the planet, but that is no big deal and well worth the wait. So while the Karayan waits to perform its burn, why don't we send up her new crew? Yes, and with barely just enough time for a quick cat nap, <laughs> there's Bartner with his fresh two stars. <laughs> uh, normally I don't like to do that, just send a Kerbal right back up again, especially at the fact that Bartner was in space for quite some time, but uh, I do need that level two engineer, and uh, Bartner is my only one right now. Uh, I. Sophia, once she's on the surface, she will be a level 2 engineer, but it was either do this with Bartner or do this with Sophia, and Bartner's down on the surface first. Anyway, along for the ride is Tamley. Tamley hasn't been in space since she was rescued. Oh gosh, that was a long, long time ago. In fact, I think it was one of the first missions of the Karaya, maybe its second mission, was going out to rescue Tamley. And also along is Carol. Carol has actually orbited the moon before and has done a flyby of Minmus and her landing on the moon will put her up to level 2 as well. So I figure she's a useful scientist to have along. But anyway, uh, we are just coming up here to the fairing separation. Awesome. I love that. Ooh, one of them, it didn't exactly come clean and, oh! Oh my gosh! I just took out one of the solar panels. Oh, that wasn't nice. Thankfully, the Kuryu's does have a second solar panel, so it's not exactly a big deal, but uh, kind of annoying nonetheless. Anyway, the orbital insertion and the setting up of the rendezvous with the station went without an issue. We are just finishing off that drift burn now and we will be encountering the station in about 17 minutes. That gives us just enough time to pop over to the Karayan 1, which is also getting ready to perform its rendezvous burn. And as we perform this burn, it is the Karayan 1 that is in the center of our view here, but if you take a look behind it in its orbit, you can see the Kuryu's there closing in on the space station. Yeah, it's not that far away. But it was all comfortable, the bouncing back and forth. It wasn't that big of a deal. And I'd love to say that I plan it all this way, but I don't. Sometimes things just work out. So 15 minutes later, the Kuryu's was closing in on its docking port. And the Karayan's about 20 minutes away. So uh, we are going to have to get ready for it, though, because the, the Karayan only has uh, one of those uh, Clampatron Juniors attached to it. And the only Clampatron Clamp 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 Jr. on this station is actually being taken up by that homegrown rocket fuel tank that we rescued for a contract uh, a couple of episodes ago we did it. We still have to get it down to the surface. So we're going to have to put a new one out there. So we're going to send out Bill. We happen to have an extra docking port lying about. I, I do tend to save these things and we'll attach it onto here. And uh, yeah, we should rename this. Let's see, temporary docking port? No, 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 no. Jeb might not know what that means. Here, Jeb. Yeah, this will be the here, Jeb port. That will remove any confusion. It is certainly a party of vehicles 
at the station right now. And in fact, if you count the total number of parts that you see on the screen right now, there are 350 parts there all together. And I gotta say, my, my processor, <laughs> my computer, I don't have the most beastly of machines, and my processor isn't quite enjoying that. Um, yeah, that, that has just, with, with KSP, it's calculating the physics on all of the parts that it has, and uh, when you start getting a lot of parts on the screen at the same time, um, yeah, you start to have trouble unless you have a very, very strong CPU, which, uh, yeah, I don't really have. I suppose I can look at investing in some improvements, but to be honest, I'm really sort of hoping, <laughs> fingers crossed, 1.1 when it comes out and uh, we get the move to Unity 5 that we'll hopefully see some performance increases. We'll see, we'll see what we get when we get uh, the newest version of Kerbal Space Program. Hopefully that won't be too far away. In the meantime, what I'll do is I'll keep running. Every time I'm around the station, you might be noticing I'm running at a two times speed, and this is at two times speed right now, which actually, if you take a look at the clock ticking in the top left corner, is actually pretty close to just regular full time. Anyway, once we're docked, we'll send out Bartner, and Bartner will fix those reaction wheels because he is my level two engineer. That's why he's here. He'll also replace some of those missing batteries. We have tons of spare batteries and we'll reposition them too. So perhaps they won't be so susceptible to heating when we, doing our, when we do our arrow braking. And he'll inspect the whole rest of the Corian. And then we're gonna send the Corian out to the moon uh, where it will rendezvous with the Kegel 2 lander and perform a moon landing. Uh, I think we'll probably be doing that though uh, next episode. And then the Corian 2, uh, its next mission is going to be going to Minmus, but for that to happen, we need to get up its new crew because Jeb and Chrissy and Glafia are going to be on their way down to the surface for a well-deserved break. And in case you're wondering why I'm picking which vessel to go which way, uh, at Minmus, I have a, uh, a, a Kerbal that needs to be rescued. So I'm going to be sending my uh, Corian with the extra living space out to Minmus uh, to pick up so that, you know, they're a little less cramped. The Corian 2 actually has another feature I want to take advantage of, uh, and that is the leak orbital module. Um, so right here I'm looking at the Corian 1 actually, and the orbital module that it has um, is the onion uh, orbital module. And I have a ton of science that I brought back from uh, outside of the uh, Kerbin sphere of influence. And the leak orbital module attached to the other Corian, well, it has a science lab built into it. That was one of the upgrades that came with the homegrown rocket community fixes. So what we're going to do, and I've never really had a chance to play with uh, the lab modules and the science modules before, uh, so this is my first try with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this science over to the leak orbital module, that's part of the Corian 2, and then we're going to deposit it in. And then since we have two scientists, we also have Luya aboard here, we're going to bring Luya over to that same module, to the leak, because we can fit two Kerbals in there. And the more scientists you have, and the higher the level of those scientists, the more science you can generate. So we'll just get Luya in here. There we go. Board. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the science that we just put in there. Okay, yeah, review data. There we go. And you can see we got a new button here. And this says to process in the lab module, and it's plus 45 data. So we press that. We'll press the next one. Yeah, why don't we just press all of these? And so what these are doing is generating scientific data. Now, this isn't science just yet. Um, I'll get to that in just a second. And it's not using up the science. That's an important thing to understand that I didn't quite understand at first uh, as well. What it's doing is it's processing the science and generating extra data for it. And you can see that process is, is happening up there in the top left. And once it's done, it kind of pops back. The science is still there. It's just now that processing button is now done. So why don't we just cut to when all of this processing got finished. You know, and I got into uh, <laughs> transferring resources around to get these vessels ready for the next mission and didn't notice at first that up at the top there I got a message saying that that leak module doesn't have enough data storage. So I had to check this out. I got 303 data 
and I can now generate science at 0.2045 data a day. Now I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but remember this is doing it all the time. And I think, think <laughs> that if I start moving this ship around to other places, in other words, if I put it around Minmus, I'm curious to see if that rate of science generation actually increases or if it's a function of where the science came from. Is it a function of where the lab module is, or where the science came from? I don't know, but we're going to find out when we send this guy off to Minmus. Anyway, Chrissy's going to take the science from this capsule and then we're going to bring it over to one of our Kerr users because uh, the, her and Jeb and Glafia are on their way down to the surface to level up. Yes, all three of these Kerbinauts are going to level two. In fact, Chrissy is a hair's breadth from level three. Uh, you might recall from a few episodes ago, I was hoping she might go to level three, but if you take a look at her points, um, if, when I look at her points, it says 16 out of 16, and this really confused me. And you might remember, there was a, an episode quite some time ago where I was confused by the experience points and why it says 16 out of 16 and why that's not level three. Well, it turns out, although it doesn't really tell you this, um, the moon uh, is actually not um, whole numbered experience points. So, for instance, uh, doing a let me think, get this right. Planting a flag on the moon, it says you get five experience points. You actually really get 4.75 experience points. Same thing for an orbit of the moon, which uh, I think that one is supposed to be three, but it is actually 2.75. So she is actually a poor, she's not at 16 out of 16. She's at 15.75 out of, out of 16, which is really, I think, kind of frustrating. But anyway. Uh, descent, you saw the descent of a Kerr used before earlier in this particular video. No big deal. And in fact, as these folks make their way down to the surface, I think I'm going to be drawing this particular episode to a close. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time. Peace.